quality uh, is defined in a variety of ways, but we're always concerned about the student, student learning, and does the student have uh, an experience in the virtual or online environment that contributes to learning. The Online Learning Consortium, Quality Matters, uh, INACO, are all organizations or, or institutions that have outlined areas of quality that uh, define uh, online education. And so from that, um, individual institutions can, can take, um, uh, build a framework and say, uh, align it with their mission, align it with their goals, and um, provide a, um, a way of thinking about addressing quality in online courses that would extend to the program as well to the, the online education at large. CMU engaged with the Ulett Foundation around a project to consider effectiveness. So not merely do we, can we put materials out there, but can we put out materials that demonstrably enact instruction for independent learners. Our goal in this case is to take areas of core expertise and strength at CMU, deep understanding of cognitive psychology, science of learning, uh, how human beings use computers, uh, and combine these things to build online learning environments uh, designed in a scientific way and then evaluated in a scientific way after the fact. We're very rigorous in our design process and ensuring that we're doing our best to either follow current learning science principles or to recognize places where um, you know, learning science is young, might not be up to the task of uh, what the specific domain challenge is that we're trying to teach. So in those cases, we'll form a new hypothesis and test it. A lot of the kind of hyperbola that's been out there so far is based on kind of comparisons of these two students or types of students without much thought about saying, how can we really get to comparing apples to apples and making a comparison which really might reveal that if I take this online course versus some other medium, how much better I do as a result? Well, I mean, the number one thing is trying to think about, one, which students we encourage to take online courses. A student who lacks motivational skills is probably not going to follow through with the things. The other is to try to think about, within the course itself, how do we create incentives for students to stay up on their work, for them to continually do the work, and in the case that they fall behind, so that they don't just immediately fall apart and leave the course, but that we can help get them back on track with their peers. Creating a policy and procedures manual. I would say 60 to 70 percent of universities don't have a policy and procedures manual specific to online education. So whether that um, policy and procedures manual have things related to evaluating instructors, promotion, tenure, enrollment caps or limits. I think it's important, again, and if this can be across the university, not so much by department or school or college, that helps with consistency as well. So critical consumption is, you know, how do I find reliable information from experts on the internet? How do I connect with those experts? in ways where I'm sure that the information I'm getting is valid, reliable, and useful, right? Um, collaboration. So this is your sort of wiki thing. How do we find ways to build and extend on each other's work without, you know, while, while still giving credit, right? While um, avoiding the sort of flame wars that can erupt? Like, how do we digitally collaborate? And I think, I think wiki's a piece of that, but I think, I think there's other things that are a piece of that. Um, if you look at, uh, so uh, critical consumption, uh, collaboration, um, I think there's, I think there's a, I think there's a, a room for, um, uh, you know, digital identity, right? So how do you build a digital identity online that a adequately reflects you and helps people find you? I mean, it's not just about do I look good, but you want a digital footprint where, um, the people you really need to know in your work find you and connect with you. So some people think, well, this is vain. You just want to look good on the internet. No, it's you want it to represent you in such a way so that when someone bumps into one of the edges of your digital identity on the internet, they say, you know, you know, I should write a paper with this guy. I, I'm gonna let's 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 contact each other and let's get going on this. You know. So I use Bloom's taxonomy 
to create assignments that require students to research things on the internet, but I specifically tell them don't use you know, scholarly journal sources, don't go you know, to what, what are the approved sources, so to speak. Um, find things that you feel are reliable. And I know people say there's all kinds of garbage on the internet, which is absolutely true, but um, my experience from what I've seen the students find is they, they can tell the difference and they're very good at saying what is garbage and what is not. Um, are the students who are finding the more unique resources spending maybe more time, they're more engaged, or you know, are the students who find the common resources doing just as well as the students who are finding these unique resources? So I'm, now I'm applying social network analysis to these student by resource networks to try to see if there are any patterns that emerge in terms of um, how they do on the assignment and where they are in terms of the network with their resources.